Hi everyone, it's Simon and today I'm going to get you all a bit inspired and excited with a bunch of new and simple ways that I'm upgrading my Notion second brain this year to make getting organised in Notion easier and more effective. So you might have spotted last week that I released the beta of my flagship Notion Live OS template to existing owners after a long wait for the Notion charts feature to go public. So this is a sneak peek at what what is coming up and some tips and approaches I think you'll love to try on your own Notion setup. Learning to use Notion as a second brain to hold all of my notes, tasks, ideas and data has been one of the most worthwhile processes for finally escaping my life overwhelm, but it can also be overwhelming in itself and I reckon these approaches are going to help you lot avoid that. Now, my full release of this new template will happen around the end of September 2024, but I'm actually also offering beta access or pre-order options if you want to get the best deal on the template right now. Or if you like the look of one of the areas that I'm sharing, I've also got a bunch of charts inspired templates in this Notion charts collection, which you may want to go and check out uh, via betcreating.com. A link to all of those options is in the description if you want to get involved. It's time now to get into these new Notion approaches in three parts. Task management, habit and workout tracking, budgeting and invoicing. So first up, I've got to say you have to give these new approaches to task management that I've been messing around with in Notion a try. We've been developing them for the Life OS this year, and I truly believe they are the best method currently possible in Notion for a balanced, serious organisation with ease and simplicity of use. And these new chart views are rather lovely too. But the best bit has got to be this new approach to a priority matrix view. So number one, if I jump into the actual Notion Life OS, is this, the quick drop inbox view that simply now filters by status. So I've created a filter in this inbox of my task manager. And if you click into it, when the status is inbox, it stays there. Then when I click add to the system, it will disappear it from the inbox. Now, what's really cool about this is if we add a new task, you can now do that without due dates. So let's say it was, I can set a due date, but I can also have no due date in there and I can link it to goals, projects and life areas as I wish uh, to see things. So this task might be on self-development and training for my life area. I might want to link it to a project, but none of that has to happen. All you really need to do in this system, which is probably the second best bit of this, which we'll show you later, is use this priority matrix setter, depending whether it's important or urgent. And I just click add to the system or I can do it down here and add it to the system. Seamless ability now to link tasks to due dates, projects, areas, goals for seamless planning. But also you can just drop things in without any of that and know that it will come back to you. And I think this new area sort, if we now go back to the Life OS, we can look at tasks directly related to areas. So for example, in self-development and training, I've added a task and I can see it directly linked in that view. You're able to use projects for say, smaller tasks like uh, building a brand identity in this example. And you can use your areas for wider things like everything related to work or personal life. It's just much more flexible. And I really like this area, a top of mind area that I've created, which simply filters everything that you want to keep top of mind. And if I jump to my better creating workspace, I have within these views, things like top of mind projects that are related to that area or top of mind tasks. And that really does help sort information. Now, the second option here has got to be this, the option to have to-do lists filtered by date within a single view. Now, what I love about this view, if I jump to my today and overdue view, I'm able to very easily and quickly look at tasks for the current day. I'm currently doing this and it's in progress. Um, I can order them with a uh, kind of ordering system, which is rather nice. So if I made this one three, and this one four, it keeps them in a nice order. 
So it's just a quick way to do things. But the best thing to do about this is I can then look at other tasks down here and go, okay, I want to send accounts data. I want to change the due date. I can just drop it in, put it in the list, and you'll see those items turn up on that day. So this is a lovely way just to kind of look at your priority list or maybe you want to go and look at your top priority tasks and go, oh, I want to finish that video and I'd like to do that tomorrow. I'll just drop it in. I can see that it's there. But the best bit has to be this priority matrix view. So if we take finish this email automation, the two key items here are these buttons. So if I click important, it updates the priority matrix formula to be priority two, which is deep work. If I put urgent and important, it's do now. If it's just urgent and not important, it's uh, to schedule or delegate. And then if it's neither, it's just low importance. And that works off Stephen Covey's priority matrix, that kind of four grid position where you can work out what to do with a task. And then there's this simple priority formula that allows you to create these views and then I've just grouped board views by it. So you can then view all of your tasks by priority. But even cooler than that is it allows you to do things like have a top priority view or a deep work view for everything that's marked as just important. My other favorite little trick for managing tasks is creating database buttons. These are reasonably new and what's cool about these is I can just click complete and it clears them from the view. And I would say that is the same for our quick drop inbox. Once I've dropped something in there and I'm happy for it to go, I can just click add to the system. So an inbox becomes a really useful place to be planning new ideas and dropping them in. So here's a quick demo of how I'm using my task manager system in this Notion Life OS. So this is my inbox. I will just add a new task with the button, uh, name it. I can set if it's important and urgent, urgent, important, so on and so forth. Let's call it urgent. I can set a date if I want to or a deadline if I want to. I'm going to say the deadline is Monday. I can change the assignee so it can be listed to different people and I can decide if it's blocked by anything else and that will just show a little report on it. Let's say that this was blocked by watching Better Creating. I'll do that before I take Pepper somewhere and it will give me a report on it. Then when I'm happy with it, I can click add to the system and it will remove it from the inbox and drop it in there. So this is something I can just work through and process uh, each afternoon or every couple of days to add them into the system. I can then jump via my navigation straight back to my today list and I'll see my task dropped in to probably the next seven days. There you go, there's take Pepper to the vets. Let's say I actually wanna bump that forward and do it tomorrow. I can just pick it up and drop it into tomorrow. Easy. Once I've completed it, I can just check it off and complete it. But let's also say you wanted to make sure that you could view this within a certain area. I can also add it to a life area, such as personal life. Doesn't change anything about the system, but it, what it does mean is that if I want to view stuff by life areas, I can jump into my life area, see what I've got to do in personal life, open up tasks. Oh, and I've got to take Pepper to the vets. Easy job. You can even add subtasks to it, but personally, I prefer to use projects. And when it's complete, I click complete and it changes the status to done and filters it from the system. So that's task management. Make sure you hit the like button if you're finding this useful and let me know what you'd like to improve or add to this system in your approach to Notion to-do lists. Maybe we can feed it into the setup. Habit tracking and workout tracking. So I have actually overhauled my habit tracker and my workout tracker, mostly because my previous versions were way too overcomplicated. Well, what's really exciting is these new charts adding a lot to the party. This approach that I'm using gives a really lovely feeling of a custom uh, UI to the way that you track habits and manage your data for them, but also it's simple day-to-day -day usability that is really working beautifully. And here's a quick bonus trick I've been enjoying for you template creators out there, which is using a button for guides. I can click my template guide button. I think more templates should have useful guides and I'm finding this is really helping out users. So it means I can have a quick link to that page and people are able to open up the options and see how to use the system quickly and easily. Let's talk about habit tracking 
And my tracker system uses three things. We've got these buttons down here, which if I open one up, simply links to this day's database and filters a new entry by at today, which is that entry, which is, by the way, the template within that database. This also links to a second database, which is the habits database, where I'm just inventing habits, which I link those buttons to. And finally, this days database is where we're able to track all the days as we go through. So this is set to repeat daily. This is the trick to this system. If I open this up, you can set repeats for database templates. Mine just repeats every day at my time zone and it creates this view. And it means that when I want to track a habit, I can say I've done some reading. I just click log reading and it relates it to that day. And that relation will then add a count of two out of 12 complete. You see it just updated there. So if I was to log gratitude, I click it, two out of 16 are complete. We can see the progress and we can see all of these reports, which are a massive formula I've written. When you create a new habit, you can simply add a new habit. Let's call it create a video a week. I link it to the current year. I set a start date. Let's say that that is going to be from 1st of August. And maybe I'll just do it to the end of this year. So I can set my end date really specifically. I can then set the frequency. Let's say it was once every week in units and it will calculate the total target that you're aiming to hit. You could drop in and maybe I want to link it to a goal. I can click link it to a goal that I've got there, film 10 videos and publish them to YouTube and I can see that it is all reported within there. I just then duplicate a button, go in here and just make sure that this adds a habit to create a video. Click done and then if I click publish video it will add it and you'll see the report update giving me the last time I logged something and the days remaining. Pretty cool right? Now I have a separate workout tracker which I can jump to from this button and the reason for that is one key thing. I wanted to gamify it and make it a mobile friendly item for when I'm in the gym. I got super inspired by my Notion friend Amy to tweak my previous approach to this, which had two databases, exercises and fitness areas. Uh, and I've now turned it into four databases, a workout sessions master database, which you can see here. And then we have a records database, which will report on the progress I'm making on each one. And then finally, we have a series of other databases, which you can see from this uh, charts area, which is weights training, cardio training, and classes and sports sessions. So what I'm really proud about with this though, is the kind of button usability of it. So let's say I start a new workout, it will generate a new template. And then we see here, there is a timer. So I can start my workout by clicking the timer and it will say that it's in progress with my report and where I'm at. And it's added a start time to the item. And then I can use these buttons down the side to click which of these I'm doing. So let's say I'm going to go and do deadlifts. I can then just put in how many I do. I'm going to do five, one set. I'm going to make the weight 50 kg. I'm not that strong. Maybe that's good. I don't know. <laughs> we can jump back to the workout session and see that we've uh, done one exercise in weights. I could log a run outside and I could say that the distance was 5k and the time it took me was 30 minutes and it will work out my pace. And although this was probably way too fast, I can then click end session and it will count how long I did it. So if I update this so it's a little bit more realistic, it will say that I took 61 minutes over it that the exercises included these and they were in these classes. And I can also see my record for deadlifts is 50K G, which I did today. Cool. We then jump back to the workout tracker and my graph updates to show me the minutes that I spent working out each day. And how about this? Weight sessions, I can see what I've covered. I could go to my cardio sessions and see I've done one run outside. There's not a lot in this system and I can track them. So I think that is super cool for tracking workouts. So yeah, let me know what you think of that. Surely that deserves a subscribe if you want to learn more about how to do all this stuff.
Okay, last but not least, perhaps the newest section of my Life OS and the one that I am most proud of in this new build is my budget and subscriptions financial tracker. This is an advanced approach to budgeting and invoicing and tracking your subscriptions in a wonderful way to manage project budgets and even invoice clients directly from Notion. And it all links back to a financial year which you can view and see the update of information about how it's been going in that year. And you can even view these wonderful, oh, look at that, thumbs up, views of your expenditure and income. Now, this tracker is made up of a little set of databases. Number one, financial years database. We then have a budgets database, which allows us to create a new budget. And this can be for any scale of project. So I could track freelance work, could be a specific house renovation or maybe just my personal budget. But the joy of these is that you can then ensure, first of all, that they are linked to a financial year, but you can also link them to projects, um, life areas, whatever you want, so that you budget for those specific things and then it would all roll itself up and total from there. But there are another two databases which all of this works to, which are the expenses and income databases. And if we jump back to our historical archives view, you'll see that we have all income that is tracked within the income database and all expenditure that's tracked within the database. And you can see that it shows all different budgets within that. And of course, per budget, you're going to have um, filtered views of that income and expenditure. And the final database is a completely separate subscriptions database, which allows you to track those subscriptions. If you wanted to, you could link them to specific budgets. And then all of that will track your monthly costs, what's live, what's not. You can set things to live. You will get review updates via this report. It's really cool. I love it. But what I really like about this is that we can track separate projects and even do predicted budgeting for a budget. Let me show you a little example. If we jump in here at my house renovation. So with this, I might want to plan my expenses so I could just drop some new things in. Let's say wood, cabling, you get the idea. And I can add categories into it. You can update these as you need them. You can set your budgeting spend and it will predict the spend. But if we wanted it to be, I'm going to get them to come weekly for a period of time, it will then update that information. You can then actual tr actually track actuals down here. So in here, I can drop actual expenses and it will track if it's an overspend or not, et cetera, et cetera. Really, really cool. But my favorite part of this is invoices because you can actually now do invoicing directly in Notion. So for example, I'm going to create a new invoice. It will pop up my new invoice. I can call it. Don't know why I'd be doing that, but you get the idea. I can then invoice them. I can put the amount in. We can set the invoice due date around two weeks. You can see it reports. Uh, it's a one off. Let's say helping Pepper with cat flap build. <laughs> yeah, I can add my contacts, clicking here, find Pepper in my contacts database, and it will drop a view of that person within the system. How cool is that? And then of course, with Notion, you can now export to PDF. And you can actually download that full financial tracker and subscriptions template via bettercreating.com. So let me know your favorite approach to getting organized in Notion from this list in the comments below and do drop in and see me at bettercreating.com. You might want to check out my Notion Live OS and grab a copy of that beta in advance. You can even go for the full charts version of my task manager via the charts collection. But a digital organization system is still going to be useless unless you understand the strategies behind how to use it effectively. And to that end, I recommend watching this video next, where I break down the five essential steps to getting organized and achieving your goals with less effort. It's my part-time productivity guide. Click on my face to subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the next one. Happy notioning. Bye.